This week on ANN, ADRA focuses on long-term aid in Haiti after a devastating earthquake and tropical storm Grace makes landfall. A new innovative documentary filmed at Mount Sinai will be released in September. And a senior housing development is inaugurated in New York City. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the death toll continues to climb after days of ongoing search and rescue efforts for survivors of a 7.2 magnitude earthquake that struck the southern regions of Haiti on August 14th. Preliminary reports indicate that there are now more than 2,200 deaths and 12,000 injuries with significant infrastructure loss. Over 53,000 houses were destroyed and an additional 46,000 buildings damaged, including hospitals, schools, and churches. There are also reports of road blockages. In Petit Trois Denis, there are reportedly downed phone lines, which has left the city with limited to no communication. Haiti's capital city, Port-au-Prince, was rocked by the earthquake, but no major damages have been reported. Three days later, still reeling from the earthquake, tropical storm Grace hit Haiti, causing torrential flooding in areas and adding to the number of people in need of humanitarian assistance. Gang violence has reportedly escalated as a result, displacing more than 19,000 people in the country's southern peninsula. Ongoing damage assessments will be conducted under the leadership of national authorities, which according to local findings may take weeks to fully determine the extent of damage and humanitarian needs. ADRA has been working on several relocation projects to assist internally displaced survivors of gang violence and is working closely with the Haiti Adventist Hospital in Dequini, where the injured brought to the facility require critical orthopedic medical care and treatment. The hospital has been saturated with the injured since the earthquake struck. As ADRA assesses the needs of affected populations, it will scale up its plans to provide urgent non-food items for up to 6,000 people in St. Louis du Sud, Le Quai, and Camperan. ADRA purchased tents, tarps, shelter kits, food, and water for those most impacted in that region. ADRA Regional Director for the Adventist Church in the Inter-American Division, David Polochi, says, many people have been affected and families are still recovering, some of whom are trying to make sense of the devastation and unfathomable loss of loved ones. Thank you to everyone who has fervently been praying for Haiti and for ADRA. We continue to appeal for your thoughts and prayers as we find the strength to help people in Haiti recover through these unforeseeable ordeals. As we join forces with local officials, the Adventist Church partners and other agencies, what matters most is working together to ensure people in Haiti get immediate access to essential items and they receive ongoing aid in hopes of getting to a recovery stage. Situated in a remote valley on the Sinai Peninsula stands a small monastery that has withstood the ravages of time and history since 565 AD. It is one of the oldest occupied monasteries in the world and is filled with hidden treasures. Pilgrims and tourists flock from around the world to visit St. Catherine's Monastery and climb nearby Jebel Musa, the traditional Mount Sinai. Few get to peruse the vast collection of ancient manuscripts hidden in the monastery library. On September 2nd, that will change with the release of the documentary Codex Sinaiticus, a journey in biblical discovery, which will document a rare visit inside St. Catherine's Monastery and a meeting with Father Justin, chief librarian for a collection of over 2,300 ancient manuscripts. A combined production of Hope Channel Norway and the Trans-European Division, Tor Tjørensen and Victor Holbert take viewers on an inspiring journey. The documentary and accompanying short videos, Moments from Sinai, are more than just a travelogue or historical journey. While watching a spectacular sunset from the mountaintop, Hilbert and Tjernsen shared the story of Moses and God's faithfulness with a young Australian couple who had climbed the mountain but knew nothing about the Bible. The lively conversation during the descent led the couple to want to explore the story further. That is the purpose of the series, exploration and discovery leading to the development of faith, helping people to develop a great trust in scripture and more importantly, the God that scripture reveals. 
Moments from Sinai will be released later in the year with a second series filmed in Jordan. Codex Sinaiticus, a journey in biblical discovery, will be released the first week of September on the TED YouTube channel and a variety of other platforms. The Moments from Sinai series will then be released on a weekly basis through the end of October. The Norwegian version of the documentary is already available on Hope Channel Norway. Can you trust the text in our modern Bibles? Is it the same as the one read by the first Christians? One of the oldest books in the world will give us the answer. And that book was discovered at St. Catherine's Monastery in the middle of the Sinai Desert in Egypt. It's not the technology in use at the monastery today which is the reason for our visit. Our concern is the ancient Bible manuscript discovered here by Konstantin von Tischendorf in 1844. Tischendorf is the first in history to dedicate his life to the active search for ancient manuscripts of the Bible. He promised it to return it to the monastery at the monastery's first request. Now the manuscript was split between four different libraries. The history of the manuscript is so complicated and some people zero in on that and they lose the significance of the scriptures themselves. The discovery of Codex Sinaiticus has been very important to prove the stability of the New Testament text throughout the centuries. It is no longer possible to claim, for example, what is written in the Da Vinci Code, a popular novel. Welcome to you to receive us here at the monastery. It's nice that you came. Let me take you inside. On July 2nd, President of the Seventh day Adventist Church, Ted N. C. Wilson, and President of the Adventist Church in North America, G. Alexander Bryant, led out in a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Northeastern Towers Annex. The new complex is a 158-unit affordable housing complex located in Queens, New York, sponsored by the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. The ribbon-cutting ceremony was hosted by the project's partners, the Northeastern Conference, the Fifth Avenue Committee, and Mega Development. The administrators of the Atlantic Union Conference and the Greater New York Conference also attended the event, as did city officials, elected officials, community leaders, and other visitors. Wilson opened the ceremony by noting the importance of creating housing that generates a sense of stability and community for seniors at all income levels. Following the ceremony, in which several of the project's partners contributed words of appreciation, both Wilson and Bryant visited the NEC office to greet and pray with the staff. The Northeastern Towers Annex, a 158-unit affordable housing development for seniors, includes 56 set aside for formerly homeless seniors. Northeastern Towers Annex provides new amenities and critical affordable housing for seniors in the Rochdale neighborhood of Queens. Northeastern Towers Annex includes several on-site amenities specifically designed for its senior residents, including a community room, a media room, and an exercise and wellness center. Northeastern Towers is currently completing lease-ups, providing some of New York City's most vulnerable residents housing they can afford and creating a stable, supportive living situation. This project illustrates how the Atlantic Union Conference and the Northeastern Conference are fulfilling the General Conference Mission to the Cities initiative by meeting the practical needs of affordable housing in New York City. Coming up, in Fiji, ladies from Dorcas Ministries distribute bread to struggling communities. But up next, LifeBridge Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tacoma, Washington provides dental care to their community. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. 
With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh Day Adventists. Welcome back. At the beginning of May, the Lightbridge Seventh-day Adventist Church provided the Tacoma, Washington community with more than $90,000 worth of free dental care over a period of two days. Clinic director and local dentist Jet De La Paz and the Lightbridge team recruited more than 75 volunteers who donated their time and expertise. The clinic was hosted at De La Paz's practice, Bright Smile Dental. Through additional partnerships with the local colleges, Dental Hygiene School, and Mercy Missions of the Northwest, the clinic team was able to operate nine dental chairs concurrently and serve more than 125 patients. Along with dental work, every patient received prayer. The LifeBridge Church team is passionate about serving their community like Jesus did. They consider this much more than just a service event. Whenever they serve, they pray and look for people they can form meaningful friendships with and continue journeying with in their relationship with Jesus. It has been thrilling to see God answering those prayers and transforming lives. Here is a short video recap of the event. The LifeBridge Seventh-day Adventist Church shared this report. Hi, my name is Jed De La Paz and I own Bright Smile Dental. So right now I'm helping with a, a church plant. We're growing a church here in Tacoma. We were wondering, um, me and my friends and I were like, what can we do for the community? You know, there's always all these needs and what better way to do something for the community than start a church together. And most of us are medical professionals like nurses, doctors, dentists. And we're like, well, let's use what uh, we have and what we can do to make a difference in the community. So like, let's just do a free clinic. So that's why we're using my office here. We're like, we open it up for the community and we're trying to give out free uh, fillings, free extractions, and we have hygienists here to do free cleanings. And uh, yeah, that's kind of like how it all happened. We started it last year and uh, this is our second time doing it and it's been a wonderful experience. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the whole setup was seamless. The doctors are probably the kindest people I've ever encountered in all of my dental appointments, and that's saying a lot. second dental clinic and it's just so much fun. The day goes so fast. Um, connecting with the patients is wonderful. You feel like you're gaining the insight into their lives in a little bit of time that you're with them and it's just, it's, it's been fun. I enjoy it a lot. A group of 10,000 toasts, ambassadors, and Dorcas ladies from Nadi English Church in Fiji brought smiles to the faces of 17 families financially impacted by the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. In rural Nadi, surrounded by cane fields and accessible only by dirt roads, are isolated pockets of family homes. Some of the families live day to day not knowing where their next meal will come from. Dorcas team leader, Milika Nabarro said, we knew from our 10,000 toes community work earlier this year that there were people out there riddled with non-communicable disease and needed more help. 
We put some contributions together and bought 50 loaves of wholemeal bread and handed out to distribute them to these families. The touching part was to see children's faces light up when given bread. Nabara said it was such a humbling and satisfying experience to experience what Jesus came to do. Dorcas leader Volau Delay agrees. The 10,000 Toast ambassadors in partnership with the Dorcas ladies hope to grow this loaf ministry through kind donations. It does not take much to buy a loaf of bread, but to many it really means much. And the only way to reach the vulnerable and to share the love of Jesus is just to go. In Timor-Leste, or East Timor, the main challenges for women continue to be deep poverty, domestic violence, and lack of recognition of women's contribution to political, economic, and social spheres. Economic empowerment is particularly crucial as conflict during the Indonesian occupation and violence left nearly half of all Timorese women widowed and sole providers for their families. ADRA and Rede Feto are teaming up with a grant from the European Union and a contribution from the Austrian Development Cooperation to implement a four-year project called Empower Women in various regions throughout the country. The initiative will help 45 civil society organizations create gender awareness and inclusion programs and support female heads of households in production, processing, trading, saving, and loan activities. Empower Women's main objective is to empower women socially and economically. To boost the productivity and sales of women farmers, it will provide a mobile application that will give real-time and reliable information on markets, prices, and vendors, as well as weather and soil quality. ADRA Austria Country Director Marcel Wagner said, women in particular will experience the positive effects of our initiative by being able to enter a marketplace previously closed to them and providing dependable income, self-reliance, and even safety to them and their children. Connectedness is one of ADRA's core values. Empower Women will contribute to creating increased respect for fundamental human rights by supporting and strengthening the role of women as key agents for sustainable development and change, particularly those that are the most vulnerable. Coming up, David Trim is here with This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Adventist Mission shares the story of how music brought one man to Jesus. Hi, Bio. How are you? Are you okay? Dear VL, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me. Are your hands clean? Yeah! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19, but it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our dough with <laughs> Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Why is there evil in the world? Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I believe Bible. Welcome back. For Sunil in Pakistan, music is more than something he listens to. It's what brought him to Jesus. After being laid off from his job, Sunil decided to take music lessons and his teacher introduced him to the Bible. Adventist Mission has one. I was quite away from Jesus. I never used to know about Jesus much.
For some, music is just a combination of sounds to listen to. But for Sunil, music has a far greater value in his spiritual journey to know Christ. After losing his job due to an economic recession, Sunil coped with his situation by learning to play the guitar. The recession came in Pakistan and I was one of them when I lose my job and I, when I lost my job. So I used to need some entertainment. So I started learning guitar. So my guitar, you know, brought me to the church. Since music schools are rare and expensive in Pakistan, he decided to look for a free online music class. His search led to an Adventist music teacher. This online music class started his discovery of so many different things about his life and God's purpose for him. He guided me for one year. He used to send me the music lessons and also he used to guide, he used to guide me from the books of Sister Ellen G. White. I thought that this faith is different than the other faith. You know, why these people are worshipping on Saturday? Because the whole world is worshipping on Sunday. Either they are true or they are totally wrong. For a year, Sunil continued his online music classes, and at the same time, he learned about the Bible. Sunil's guitar teacher realized that Sunil is gifted with many skills. The teacher had written a religious book that he wanted Sunil to translate into the local language. Sunil was hesitant, since he didn't have a background in theology and only a beginner's understanding of the Bible. I said, sir, I cannot translate how I can because I don't know even the basics of the Bible. I don't know about the Bible, even I don't know how many books in the Bible. But because of his teacher's persistence and the working of the Holy Spirit, Sunil found a way to have the book translated. The translation took two months. Finally, the book was completed, and after three months, it was ready to print. After successfully distributing the book in his community, Sunil was then introduced to the Adventist Publishing Ministries. The Kassid Publishing House welcomed Sunil and equipped him to become a literature evangelist. Even though Sunil was not yet baptized, he got deeply involved in the publishing ministry. He made sure he read all the books that he was distributing. And through that, he grew to know more about Christ. Sunil continued his passion for music and distributed books at the same time. He was invited to hold concerts in churches. After each concert, he would distribute Spirit of Prophecy books to all attendees for free. After having been involved with the publishing ministry, Sunil felt a desire in his heart to finally fulfill one thing he knew was lacking, baptism. And I just tell him, sir, now I am ready because now I have knew my faith and also after knowing it, I am teaching the same faith to the others. Now it's the best time to get baptized. The Kassid Publishing House was established in 1971 and has been printing millions of publications in the Urdu language. Many have testified that through the materials printed in this institution, people were drawn closer to Jesus. Pray for Sunil and other literature evangelists who are touched by the Holy Spirit and are doing amazing works wherever they are for the glory of God. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org. Then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, we can hear about the life and ministries of Robert John Klosterhuis and Hendrikus de Floyder. Welcome to this week in Seventh-day Adventist history. On August 22, 1932, Robert John Klosterhuis Missionary and world church leader was born in Michigan. A graduate of Emmanuel Missionary College, Bob Klusterhaus went into pastoral ministry. In 1953, he married Ruth Schaun. The couple went as missionaries to Haiti in 1954, serving there for six years. From 1960 to 1975, Bob and Ruth ministered in the Midwest of the United States. But in 1976, they returned to Haiti 
where Bob served as president of the Franco-Haitian Union for four years. And then at the 1980 General Conference session, he was elected president of the newly formed Africa Indian Ocean Division. Bob and Ruth moved to Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire in West Africa. Over the next five years, under the leadership of Pastor Klusterhaus, the Africa Indian Ocean Division achieved the highest growth rate of any of the Adventist Church's world divisions, and the 1985 General Conference session elected him a General Vice President. You see him here in this photograph. Bob and Ruth returned to the U.S., and he served three terms as General Vice President, retiring in 2000, age 68. Robert Klusterhaus died in November 2019, aged 87. And on August 29, 1872, Hendrikus de Fluter was born in Hilversum in the Netherlands. At the age of nine, his family emigrated to the United States, and he grew up in Ohio, now known as Henry. He was converted to Adventism and baptized in 1899, age 27. De Fluter soon became involved in evangelistic campaigns as what was known as a singing evangelist, supporting the work of the main preachers. Henry was a brilliantly talented musician, and in his lifetime he wrote more than 200 songs, many of them popular at the time. Two are in the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. In 1926, Henry began an association with the great evangelist H.M.S. Richards, assisting him both in public evangelism and in Richards' radio ministry, The Voice of Prophecy. In this photo, you see de Fluter pictured with Richards. Later, de Fluter became a pastor while continuing to support large evangelistic campaigns with his musical gifts. Henry de Fluter spent 68 years in ministry for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He died in 1970, aged 97. And you can read more about Henry de Fluter in the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, at encyclopedia.adventist.org. And that was this week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. The passage says, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.